Hello and welcome everyone. So by now we have understood about pre-stress concrete, their types, pros and cons, the application of PSC. And now we come to the analysis of pre-stress concrete. And uh, when we talk of analysis, we are going to do analysis of pre-stresses and uh, the resulting bending stress. All right. So unless we do this analysis of pre-stress and bending stress, we can't be convinced of the benefit of pre-stressing the uh, elements. So just like in all the previous theories as we have studied, there are some basic assumptions. So similarly, here are also some basic assumptions and they are almost similar. So the first basic assumption is that concrete is homogeneous. Now it's assumption only. So homogeneous means properties are uniform in all direction at all spaces, okay, in all the axes, along the all axis. And concrete is an elastic material. Now saying concrete is an elastic material means concrete is obeying the stress strain proportionality and it is well within the uh, proportional limit and it is following the Hooke's law. So the resulting stress strain diagram which we will be drawing here also, so they will be linear here. There will be no uh, curvilinear or like parabolic or rectangular curves here, no. Everything is going to be linearly distributed here. Second assumption is uh, from the plane section theory and this is the basic uh, assumption behind the euler bernoulli theorem and that says that a plane section before bending is assumed to remain plane even after bending. So it means that strain distribution remains linear all throughout, all across the depth of the section. So strain is linear here, isn't it? Okay. So this is linear strain distribution. All right. So this is the basic um, assumption in Euler-Bernoulli theorem also and in that theorem we study that this is very important that sigma, sigma is the bending stress, sigma upon y is equal to m upon i is equal to e upon r. Sigma is bending stress, y, y is the distance of a point from the centroid centroidal axis this is the centroidal axis okay neutral axis or centroidal axis next m is the bending moment due to the external loads i i is the moment of inertia along the centroidal axis e, e is the elastic modulus of the material basically concrete uh, r r is the radius of gyration okay so this formula I hope you must have uh, remembered and uh, used it many where in uh, basic solid mechanics also but in pre-stress concrete we are going to use only the first uh, two ratios sigma upon y is equal to m upon i. So we can write this formula also as sigma is equal to m upon i divided by y. Now when I say i divided by y so it can be written as m upon z okay where z is equal to i upon y so z is said to be z is here section modulus now wherever this modulus term comes have you noticed that they are constant isn't it like modulus of rupture modulus of uh, elasticity so similar is the section modulus that means this z is something which is constant for a given section of dimension say uh, b is the width and d is the depth. So for this section b cross d section modulus is going to remain constant and that is equal to moment of inertia i that is calculated along the centroidal axis and upon y. Why now this y may vary. Cent this z, when I say this section modulus, section modulus is generally calculated for a point. Can section modulus for a point on the section. Okay. 
Now what is this 4 upon on the section? See, if this is my section B upon D, then if I take uh, this point, point number here, point my point is at the bottom. So it will have section modulus something Z1. If I take a point on this axis in this plane, so it will have some other section modulus because I is constant but y is varying isn't it similarly if i take a point on the top so for that also section modulus may vary isn't it but basically section modulus here if i am taking uh, for a point at the bottom most point then for that y will be equal to d upon 2 and i is equal to bd square by bd cube by 12 so it comes as m upon section modulus bdq by 12 divided by d by 2 so it will come out as bd square by 6 m upon bd square by 6 so such is the uh, expression for this stress sigma so this is based upon this simple euler bernoulli equation which we are asking you to remember it sigma upon y is equal to m upon i is equal to e upon r so this sigma this sigma is the stress stress bending stress and uh, sometime bending stress is represented by letter uh, this greek letter sigma and sometime it is stress is also represented in textbook by alphabetical roman letter f okay so don't get confused they are used in different places both either sigma or either small letter f now next assumption is a small deflection theory that means that the deflections resulting from the external load is well within the permissible limits so we can apply principle of superpositions very easily and as long as the tensile stresses tensile stresses also develops due to uh, in bending what happened in bending uh, some fibers will go undergo compression some fiber will undergo tension isn't it that's bending now so as long as tensile stress do not exceed the limit of modulus of rupture now again here modulus is coming so modulus of rupture that is flexural tensile capacity and this is also calculated generally in the lab by doing the modulus rupture test and till that time generally it never exceeds the change in the loading will result change in the stress in concrete only so it's obvious if you change the loading patterns the stresses distribution will also change in the concrete only here only word is important because uh, the stresses bending stresses or pre stresses are only pertaining to the concrete not to the steel okay not to the steel because if you tension the steel also the ultimately through transfer the tension in the steel is going to be transferred as a pre-stress in the concrete okay and if you apply some external load so that pre-stressing counteract the stressing resulting from the external load and there is a resultant bending stress is there in the concrete only okay so it's obvious now here we have three different approaches to analyze a pre-stress member at two stages one is the transfer and other is under service load now what happens at transfer at transfer means uh, actually when we pre-stress a concrete we do pre-stressing generally before application of any external load pre-stressing is done before applying external load and when the external load is applied then it is under the service load okay so it's two stages at transfer and under service load okay and between this there is some losses of stresses also incurring so basically there are three approaches of analyzing pre-stresses or the bending and the bending stresses so these three approaches are respectively based upon stress concept now we are going to most of the time we are going to use this first one first approach 
that is based on a stress concept and it is most versatile method and it is applied in most of the situations but there are few situation in which uh, by intuition we can uh, derive to the res uh, results very easily through other approaches also like based on force concept based on load balancing concepts so all these three concepts are equally valid in any situation and if we use any of the situation any of the approach we will be arriving to the same result only so let us uh, discuss only the first approach that is based on stress concept and uh, using this stress concept we are going to analyze the pre stresses the pending stresses both so let us take the most simplest uh, example here and i hope you must have rem uh, re remembered the three types of pre stressing based upon the profile of tendons first one was the concentric psc in which the tendon was axially tensed okay second one was the eccentric pre stress concrete in that tendon was tensed with an eccentricity from the centroidal axis and the third one was concordant psc in which the tendon is having a profile along the length of the element so that is concordant psc so all these three types of psc are going to come here and we are now going to discuss only concentric psc here and uh, let us begin with this so we are assuming that this beam which we have taken here is having self weight is equal to 0 so now this is impossible that self weight is 0 this is an hypothetical case but here we have applied pre stress this concrete this element with pre stressing force p okay so this is compressive in nature okay so this beam is being compressed by this force p from both side due to pre stressing okay and this uh, tendon is passing exactly through the centroid of this section all right so that's why it is concentric psc and due to this there is uniform pre stress developing in the concrete at any section let us take a section say a a dash okay and uh, in the if the, we draw the cross section this is my a a dash okay so this is a a dash and uh, coincidentally it also have an area area cross sectional area is also equal to a and the compressive force here is equal to p due to pre stressing so stress stress will be equal to p upon a and it is uniformly uh, distributed through the, throughout the area of the uh, this beam cross sectional area of this beam and this uh, stress is compressive in nature and here this notation plus sign is also used you see this plus sign so for compressive stress in this unit we are using plus sign as a notation you can remember this and we can say tensile stress it will be represented as minus sign all right so this was the concentric tendon now here the self what self weight was equal to zero but what happened if there is some self weight and above that there is some applied load also uniformly distributed load like this if we have applied some udl above this beam or say, say there is no external load but there is some self weight then what will happen this cell weight will try to induce some tension some tensile stress okay and that tensile stress will be towards the soffit and what is soffit see these uh, terms are very very important and uh, let us discuss them here uh, the top top fiber there are two fiber two extremes in a beam okay remember there are two extremes extreme points and the extreme points can be either at the top or the, it can be at the bottom now topmost fiber can 
also be said as supremum fiber supremum and bottom most fiber can also be said as inframum now this top fiber is supremum fiber and bottom fiber is inframum fiber but for bottom fiber there is another name also that is soffit okay so this soffit is also used for the bottom most fiber now we also write this supremum here as sup and inframum as inf this is simply a representation nothing to worry about this but this is how we denote some extreme points in psc now towards the soffit there will be development of tensile stresses due to this udl and uh, if we want to counteract this tensile stress we have to make this uh, tendon eccentric but before going to that we take a break here and we will meet with the eccentric tendon in the next video so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you